Alright, it's another weekend, so I think I'm going to work on Project Cassian for a bit. So we're going to start up the Node server, then we're going to go over to Google Chrome, and we're going to actually activate, or we're actually going to navigate to the website here on localhost 3000. Then we're going to, we're going to move it over to the right monitor. Alright, okay, awesome. Now we're going to log in, because I need to log in to test what I want to work on, and... Oh god, that email address! Oh god. Ah, uh, that's a little awkward. Something's got to be done about that. Hey there everyone, and welcome to another video. I hope you guys enjoyed that little skit that I did just then where I logged into Project Cassian and saw f an awkward email address that I won't repeat, or even show in this video, that I, I, I want to change. And th that wasn't, that was just a skit, but it is actually a real situation. Um. So let's, let's come up with a little situation here. You're a programmer. You're writing a web application. Or something that needs user login. You need to be able, you need users to be able to log in with a username and a password, preferably an email address. Um, and, and before you implement email verification and everything, you want to make sure the login system works. Can you log in and can you do things and can you stay logged in? So you don't implement email verification, and you just create your first account. Now, you don't expect this account to last forever, so being that bored programmer that you are, you, you use a random email address that isn't real, um, that's just random placeholder text. Um, maybe it's something random, maybe it's a profane email address like fuckitu.com, or maybe it's named after your best friend, like was the case with me. And maybe... In the in that last case, you end up losing that best friend. Well, what happens now? Now you have to change that email address because, of course, as a programmer, you're okay with it. But as a human being, you have a reminder of that lost best friend in your program. And of course, as a programmer, you know you can fix that. And as a human being, you want that email address not to be there. So that's the case with me right now. My developer account is. With, it has an email address named after a friend who I won't repeat the name of, who isn't exactly a friend anymore, and I want to move on, and part of moving on involves fixing that issue where I can't change my email address in Project Cassian. And that's going to be what this video is going to do. I'm going to be doing a development time lapse where I implement email or email changing. I won't do ver verification, but I will be implementing the subsystem that generates verification links, which is ultimately required to allow you to change your email address. See, so you need to be able to verify that you are who you are by clicking a link that sends you to the, e or to the new email address. Anyway, let's get started. That was a lot of talking, and get to work. I started by working on the user interface of this whole thing. I wanted to make it so it was a modal dialog that you click a button to open and then it allows you to change the email address from there. That way, I can prompt the user with additional messages without making the page all uh, disastrous and big and overly complicated. So I started work on that. Now this is an HTML application, so luckily um, it was a lot easier to deal with than Windows Forms to do this. So. Yeah, I got to work on that. I should also mention that I was using another user account to test this whole thing. I didn't want to use the primary user account because if I broke something, I didn't want my primary development account, which I have everything set up in, to break. I want a sacrificial lamb to break instead. You should always have multiple dummy accounts when you're developing something like this. That way, if you break one, you don't break the most important one.
this point I had gotten the HTML written for the user interface, but I wasn't sure if it was working yet. I wanted to test it with the modal to make sure that it actually opened when you click the button, and moreover wanted to test out if entering an email address in the box worked while entering something that else was not an email address did not work. Once I had gotten that tested out, I added some database fields for users for the new email address entered in the form, as well as the token that we're going to generate later when sending them a link to confirm it. Now it was time to start writing the server side. It was simple. Generate a token, store it in the database as well as the user's new email address, send the user a link with the token, and allow them to click it. For now, I'm just going to present a message to the user containing the link when they get to their next page, but the link should be sent to them by email on a later date. I just haven't implemented the ability to send emails with this thing yet. Then, I wrote the code that allows the server to accept these tokens as confirmation that your email exists. Those of you out there who use Node.js, Mongoose, and Express frequently are about to notice the big mistake I'm about to make. But, rest assured, I noticed it later on and fixed it. I had gotten the link from the email address, and then gotten the little message that says this is my link. Then I popped it in my browser, and then, oh no, the server crashed. Something went wrong. I eventually noticed what I did wrong, and then tried to fix it, but then made another mistake. And then I noticed that one when it crashed the server, and then fixed the mistake for real. And now that it's done, it's time to test it out for real. Alrighty, so at this point in the video, I've already tested the feature multiple times, and it does work. I just want to show it off to you guys. So if we go account settings, I'm in a dummy account right now, which you really, if you're programming one of these, you should have a few dummy accounts that you can break on purpose. Um, so that you don't break your main dev account. Um, just a habit that I have, and it's probably a good idea. Uh, if you disagree, then dis then we'll agree to disagree on that one, but, um, if you go to account settings, you click change email, pops up a little dialog box, and this dialog box tells you that you should enter, or that if you change your email, you'll have to log in using the new email, and you'll get notifications to that new email. Um, and you should enter the email in the box below. Um, when you do, you will get a link sent to that email address, and you click the link, it'll confirm that the email exists, and until until you click the link, this change means nothing, it won't, you will still be using the old email address. Um, so right now it's team at bitphoenixsoftware.com, which is a real address that you can actually send mail to. Um, so if you want to send me and the BitPhoenix software team an email, go ahead. Um, just try to keep it uh, related to BitPhoenix software. Um, but let's say I want to do nothing at BitPhoenix. Actually, no. First of all, if I just type in nothing, it's going to give me an error saying this isn't an email address. Um, but if I do nothing at BitPhoenixSoftware.com, It'll go through, it'll give me a link up at the top, which, no, which in the future it'll send you the link through email itself, but um, because I don't have that implemented, uh, it'll just send you the link now um, through the UI. So if you take that link, 
um, which is very hard to do because of XSS prevention. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm printing this in plain text that you can't embed 8 HTML in it, which means no scripts can be run and thus no cross-site scripting vulnerability. Anyway, um, if we take the link, paste it into our web browser, hit enter, it'll take you back to your account settings, and it says, success email address successfully confirmed. And your email is now nothing at bitphoenixsoftware.com, and it works perfectly. Um, I already did this on the developer account that was in the skit before. Um, I'm not going to log into that one because my last pass database needs to be updated, and thus um, it's going to have the old email address. But um, it is changed. I'm good to go. My problem solved, and now there's a big milestone reached in Project Cassian. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.